Hey everybody, Leonidas here. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be going over how to make the perfect weapon in Ground Branch. Whether you're new to the game, haven't uh, played the game yet, and just want to know about the customization options in the in Ground Branch, this is an awesome video. If you're kind of overwhelmed, the, the system is uh, pretty intense. There's a lot of moving pieces and parts, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make the perfect weapons uh, for a CQB build, a mid-range marksman, and then a sniper rifle. Um, so go ahead and stick in the video. If you like the content, go ahead and hit the subscribe or like button. And if you wanna see more videos about Ground Branch or uh, kit setup, whatever it may be, throw it in the, throw it in the comments below. But uh, we're gonna hop into this video right away and get you guys rolling. Video. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about uh, the weapons customization in Ground Branch. Uh, the system is one of the most in-depth that you'll find in any game out currently. Um, specifically, we're going to be talking about how you make a weapon, and then I'm going to give you, give you three versions uh, or types of weapons uh, I recommend. So we're going to be talking about CQB um, weapons, mid-range, and then uh, a sniper or snot weapon. Um, so we'll go ahead and start off with just the system overall. So we'll start with the CQB and we'll talk over uh, kind of the do's and don'ts. So for CQB, recommend you have the shortest barrel possible. In the game currently, for assault rifles anyway, you're looking at the HK416 CQB, the Mark 18, and then uh, if you're trying to rock an AK uh, type system, go ahead and pick the AK74 MI CQB. Um, but we're gonna use the one I like to use a lot, and that's the HK416. So we'll go ahead and hop in here, we'll strip everything off, and we'll just go through this step by step. So you'll come up and when you first start doing this, you'll see just an empty weapon, uh, nothing on it. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is optics. Um, so you'll go ahead and go to sights. Uh, for CQB, I recommend just having an optic. We're talking about people who are just operating buildings. You don't need a 3X or anything like that. That's just gonna get in the way of your sight picture. It's gonna block part of your screen and you won't be quite as effective operating indoors. Um, for me, the Two that come to mind right off the bat are your uh, your EOTech, the HWS EXPS3. Um, it's got a couple colors here, and then they have the longer version, which I don't recommend just due to a little bit of cutoff there on the bottom. And then the other one I recommend is the Micro T2. Um, so we'll go ahead, we'll throw on just the normal black EOTech. We'll talk uh, quickly about what these dots are. So you'll see. Uh, you can move it along these dots and that's actually replicating a Picatinny rail system like you would in real life. Um, you can put it anywhere on the rifle. So I've seen a lot of people in game have them all the way forward, all the way back, somewhere weirdly in the middle. Um, in this game, and I'll, we'll talk about it, I'll show you what I, what, why I do this. I like to have the whatever optic I'm using, the front of the optic, in line with the ejection port cover. Um, it maximizes the sight picture that you see, but without cutting off your entire screen if you're using a bigger optic like the EOTech. So we're going to put it the ejection port cover, um, and I'll show you kind of the difference that it makes. We'll go to the extremes. I'll put it at the end of the barrel, and I'll show you kind of why you don't really want that. And I'll, I'll put it as close as you can to the buttstock, and I'll show you why you don't really want that um, at the end of this. And then for uh, opt for attachments for CQB, um, a couple must-haves. Uh, you really, really want a um, IR uh, laser and IR uh, floodlight, and you're gonna find those in lights and lasers. Um, the AN PEC-15 is really the only one they have currently for laser systems. Um, it's pretty realistic, but you have newer stuff like the LA-5s. Uh, a couple other smaller uh, companies are making other ones, but. We'll go ahead and throw the PEC-15 on there. Um, and then for alignment, you don't want it all the way in the back because the further you are from the muzzle, the more of an adjustment in real life you'll make and you also cut off uh, your barrel and it doesn't really work. So you want this as far forward as you can get it without it getting, you see how the kind of the cap there um, is kind of where the muzzle gas is going to come out. So you want to back that up just so it's sticking off uh, the barrel. In real life, I would put my PEC-15 on the top of my weapon system, just because when you go for your C-grip, you're gonna either hit that pressure switch or hit the button on the top. Um, but we're gonna put it on the side and I'll show you, I'll actually put it on the top and show you why you don't wanna have this thing sitting on the top. I know a lot of people in real life, um, it's not quite this bad, especially with LA-5s or putting a riser um, to elevate that EOTech. But in this game, it's just, 
a lot easier to just stick it on the side. You don't actually have to manipulate with your hands a pressure switch or the, the button there on the top of the, the optic. Um, and then finally, you can pick a couple different lights, but uh, the M300, 600, I don't know, I haven't really tested it, but that should just reflect lumens. And then they have the Willy or Wiley Tactical or whatever the WMLX is. So stick one of those on the right side and you can put a, you can put that flashlight into either IR or a visible light. Uh, you want those because if you're clearing indoors, you might not necessarily want to turn on nods. Uh, just because if someone has a flashlight that's going to blind you um, and make it a lot harder to engage them so maybe you just want to keep your nods off you're going to turn on your white light or maybe you're going full full uh, zero dark 30 on them and you're going to have your nods down and you want to ir flood to blind their nods if you're playing pvp um, the last thing we'll talk about with the cqb weapon system is the the muzzle attachment here um, so kind of the pros and cons of a muzzle on a CQB weapon like this. You are adding about four to six inches depending on what suppressor you use, uh, but you're just adding length. So your transitions um, and manipulating the weapon system up and down into the low and high readies. Uh, say you're going around a corner, it's just gonna be a little bit slower and it's gonna be a little bit uh, slower getting up to your, your shooting position. Um, so I actually, on CQB weapons, um, on the next two we talk about, I recommend suppressors because engaging at distance is a lot harder to, as the enemy, to pick up where that shot's coming from because you're not getting quite as large a muzzle flash as well as the noise uh, advantage. But with a CQB weapon, you're going room to room. The enemy knows where you are because you're actively engaging them and they're probably looking at you right in the face. Uh, for magazines, if you want to throw on the, I think the 35 round magazine looks really silly. Uh, but if you're just like a hardo and want a 35 round clip, go ahead and go ahead and not a clip magazine. Um, we'll talk about all these risers, all this other stuff as we keep moving forward. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and I'll show you why you don't want your peck on the top like I have it here. Um, it's not quite as bad with the EOTech, so I'll actually throw on the T2. Um, what I'm talking about is the bottom part of your sight picture being cut off. Even if you use the riser, they have a riser built in one. That's not quite as bad, but between your hand and that, uh, you can already see it. I mean, I'll show you what I mean, but you can already see the, the height difference there. You're going to have a little bit of your sight picture cut off. Um, but we'll go ahead and hop in here and I'll show you what I mean. So you're engaging your target and you can just see it's only about the bottom 10% or so that's cut off, but it's, uh, I don't know. In my opinion, it's better to have your whole sight picture. In real life, you put a LA-5 there and you're not even gonna notice it. I know in real life I have one uh, mounted on the top of my weapon system just to manipulate that pressure switch and the button. But uh, that's why I recommend not doing it. You can step off your T2 and get it closer to your face if you want. That'll also help um, kind of mitigate that. But I'll also go ahead and show you why you kind of want your sight where I mentioned to put it uh, just over the ejection port cover. So we'll go ahead and move this to the side and I'll show you kind of the advantages to have just putting on the side for this game. Um, so I've seen this, I swear, to, I swear I've seen this in game. I saw someone do this with their optic. And I mean, I guess if you like doing this for whatever reason, like the reason I don't like doing this is because yes, your peripheral vision is great, but at this point, your optic isn't an optic, it's a laser system. You're using it to point and shoot. You might as well just hip fire with your laser the whole time because this is just silly. Like you're, you don't have a sight picture. You're just using the red dot as a laser that the enemy can't see. But you can't actually, if you have a group of people, all you can do, I can't be more than 15 meters from this black target right here. And all I can do is aim at him. If I had this step back, which I'll go ahead and push it back, you'll be able to see what I mean by your sight picture. The actual like area you're able to see within this little circle is a lot bigger when you move it back to the ejection port cover, which means you can engage more targets rapidly. You have a better overall vision. And like if you're just focused on this, you see how you can now fit both targets in there like pretty easily. That way when you're shooting, you're just transitioning. You don't have to like look away from your red dot every every time to reacquire a target. So that, that's my recommendation. Take it or leave it. Um, yeah, I if you're not running a 3x, which I'll show you in the next weapon system, the best place for your optic is right over that ejection port cover. Uh, if you have it all the way back, I'll show you kind of the 
the con of that. So if you have your thing all the you have your optic all the way back, you can just see that optic takes up all that room. All you can really see, and with bigger optics, it'll be worse. With the EOTech, it's even worse. But you're losing probably 10 to 15 percent of the total screen resolution you have due to the optic being in your face. So again, recommend you put that optic uh, right above the ejection port cover kind of makes the the best of both worlds and if you like realism that's where most people put it so that'll wrap up cqb let's go ahead and jump right into mid-range so mid-range for me anything from 50 to about 300 meters which is like the most typical engagements anything within 300 is a, a really typical engagement um for this uh would not recommend the hnk 416 uh i mean it can work it can work fine but uh, you're, you really want a, a slightly longer barrel. A uh, longer barrel means more uh, more velocity coming off the off the shot. When you fire it, it's gonna have a longer time in the barrel to build up that pressure. It's gonna come out with a higher muzzle velocity. You're gonna get better range at a better accuracy at range. Uh, the only con of having a longer barrel, I kind of touched on it with CQB. But the longer your barrel, the more uh, the more resistance you're gonna have manipulating your weapon system near obstacles near walls. It's going to take longer for you to get into the the shooting position from the high or low ready uh, my recommendations the ones i really like to use are the the m4a1 block 2 it's a really good weapon don't use the fright unless you're like a really big front sight post guy that's what this fsp means front sight post it's basically a sop mod with a full length uh with a full length handguard the other one i would use uh you can use the mark 18 not bad weapon system at all and again if you're trying to rock uh rock some AK variants, just go ahead and pick up the 74 MI, or if you're like a Ukrainian or Russian dude and you wanna do some target practice, go ahead and do the AK 74 M. Um, FNs are weird. I actually had some trouble, uh, it was pretty glitched. I couldn't shoot using the FN, so I'm not sure if they fixed that recently, but I had some trouble with that a couple days ago. So we'll go ahead and build out another mid range and we'll talk through all the, all the options you wanna select here. So the one I use most often is, uh, this m4a1 block 2 you can see i have a couple different versions of it we'll start from scratch like i did for cqb so we'll take everything off so um starting with this let's start with optics so you have two options if you think you're going to be maybe 150 meters and in that's that's a pretty realistic range to be engaging targets my recommendation would be uh, running an eotech and with a 3x so in order to compensate for that additional room you want to push your eotech to the front of your uh, your upper receiver there so you'll take that and you'll take your 3x and you want to get them as close as you can and right about there and you just walk it in if it disappears if one of the items disappears it means that you put one of the attachments in a position where the game cannot render it because they're right on top of each other so just back it up one and there you go. And the reason you want them uh, really close to each other is because any distance between them is going to result in inaccuracies while you're aiming. So you want them as close as you can together. Um, in terms of other attachments, still recommend the PEC. It's great to have a distance if you're trying to talk someone on to a target. Um, and then no reason not to have a flashlight. It's a great uh, either IFF, you're like, hey, I, I see enemies or I think they're enemies. Go If it's you, go ahead and flash your flat flashlight twice so I know it's you. You flash it, they can uh, de-conflict fires there. Um, so this is the basic build. So the 3X, awesome option. Let's say you're playing on a huge map. Let's say you're playing on a compound with the full map. You're playing on one of the larger maps, maybe Orwig, or you're just a DMR, or not a DMR guy, but let's just say you're having trouble seeing enemies and you just keep getting picked off because your optics not right if uh you're struggling with that and new to the game that can happen a lot um, i recommend the voodoo which is a one by six uh adjustable site uh, it's right here it's really good in real life um for scopes and this is maybe not the most realistic thing uh, but i like to back it up not as close but probably one or two off um you're gonna lose a lot of your sight picture, but it's a scope. So you're gonna lose it in real life too. So it's not really a function of the game. Uh, a scope, if you have it in the high ready, is gonna cut off a large portion of the, the weapon and above from the rail system. 
So I like to have it as close as I can because again, it maximizes that sight picture and gives me uh, the most space within that. If you do throw the Voodoo on, I'm a huge fan of them. Uh, people seem to have differing opinions, but off-site uh, rails, I'm a huge, huge supporter of them. Um, believe they're in rails and attachments, off-site rail. All you're gonna do is walk this in as close to the, the scope as you can before it disappears. Once it disappears, step it up one dot and go ahead and stick an RMR on there. And I'll show you what this looks like in game, but it is a, for me, it was a game changer. Just pick the, I think you want the low rail. Uh, the flat the flat mount you can put on top of your weapon i'm not a huge fan of that honestly because again you're just losing more and more of your sight picture like you're making it taller you're making it harder to maneuver and this game actually has a really good animation animation uh transitioning to an offset so this is the one i run if i think i'm going to be shooting uh, at distance i'll pick this i love the voodoo sight i love my offset and i've had a lot of good luck with this so I'll show you what this looks like. I've also had a lot of new people to the game not know how to adjust their sight. So they just are like, hey, I'm stuck in one X. I can't see anything like I can't see downrange. All you do is hold left alt and use your scroll wheel to zoom in. It's just that easy. So you're just holding left alt, you're zooming in and out. So I love this site because, hey, I'm, I'm tasked with overwatching a compound. All I'm gonna do is be in maybe one or two, and then I think I see someone, and I'm acquiring that sight picture. If you're like this, and you're trying to find that one guy with like a fully, the Voodoo's not bad at a 6X, but if you're using like um, the Mark IV or the PM2, which we'll talk about in a bit, and you're trying to go fully sighted in from, uh, from the lower high ready, uh, you're gonna struggle to acquire that target. So whenever you're done with an engagement, back it out to one or two X and then you acquire your target. If you need to immediately suppress, you're ready to go. And then if you're trying to engage from long range, you can uh, increase the, the magnification. Finally, I'll show you guys the offset. So it's actually really smooth. Like I said, I love this animation. I love all animations in this game in general. All you do is use your scroll wheel and it's that quick. I would say that's way less than a second. So you're engaging someone down like let's say 150 meters, but then someone pops up close to you, all you do, it's that easy. Someone close to you and it's that quick to transition. So if I think I'm gonna be shooting uh, on compound or some bigger map, I absolutely love the voodoo. And the best part about the mid range is you don't lose your ability to conduct CQB. Like worst case, you're the last guy left or someone goes down in your team and you need to do CQB, you can still do it with this weapon and be decently competent. You don't lose all your ability. And if you have the EOTech with the 3X, you're even better off. Um, I'll show you quickly what the EOTech with the 3X is. If you're like never played this game and you're just interested in kind of what how it replicates it, we'll go to just the one I use. So this is the weapon I use the most. Um, Honestly, I haven't really noticed a significant change. You can put under barrels on, but in this game, there's no huge change to like the actual stability. In real life, it depends on if you actually know how to shoot with that under barrel attachment, but in real life, I use an angle grip. So that's just what I have on all my weapon systems. But anyway, we'll throw this, uh, throw this 3X on. I'll show you how that looks really quick. Like I said, the 3X, you obviously have 3X magnification, um, but one part that I, I like really a lot about it, or one part that's really bad about it, you can see how it cuts off almost the entire right side of my screen. That's why I like the Voodoo, because with the Voodoo, it's more or less like this, um, but you're actually able to change the, the magnification. Obviously, it's a bit harder to engage with the Voodoo. It's definitely not as good for CQB, and this can be mitigated uh, with just, locking off the left side of rooms or hallways, uh, making sure you're not sacrificing your sight picture. But uh, yeah, this is what it looks like. All I'm doing is again, with my left uh, alt hit down, I'm just roll rotating my um, scroll wheel. So it's super quick, super easy. Um, I'm pretty accurate. In, in real life, a 3X is actuated with a little spring. You just hit the release and it flings back on its own. So it's it's, it's a lot quicker than some other games portray it. Like Squad, it's pretty pretty slow and annoying, to be honest. In real life, you literally just one click and that thing's gone out of your way. But you can see why I like the EOTech. Yes, the bottom, you lose some of your sight picture, but 
all of your top, the top of the optic is actually pretty thin and you're able to really easily engage. So that's why it's my second overall optic. A lot of people like the SR2 and some other like weirder Russian and European ones, but it's just what I'm comfortable with. It's what I shoot in real life, so. Okay, we're gonna wrap up this video with a SNOT or Sniper on Target uh, weapon systems here. So if you wanna stay assault weapon, uh, that's totally fine. Maybe you don't want to switch to 7.62 because you don't want to take the, the mag um, the mag hit going down to a 20 round magazine. Or you need to be able to do CQB like we just talked about. That's fine. Um, the only real one, I mean, unless you want to rock an M16, the only real one that applies to that would be the uh, M4A1 Block 2, really. Um, I mean, you could try shorter guns, but I mean, I wouldn't. I don't know why you would. If you're truly the DMR and you're on a big map, my all-time favorite for this game, I've tried a couple different ones, um, but is the 110 Kilo 1. There's a, a couple reasons for this. One, it's like all these, I think. I can't remember if the Mark 14 is. Pretty sure it is, but they're all... That might be a 30-06. I can't remember. But... The 110 Kilo 1 is a 760 weapon system, so one big advantage right off the bat, you're getting extra damage, extra penetration. Um, so this is the one I run when I'm in game. So we'll quickly talk through what I got here. Um, I usually use the Mark IV or the PM2. Uh, those are the sights. This is the PM2. It's a 5 to 25 uh, adjustable magnification zoom. I have my offsite. Uh, I think this one, uh, this the Kilo one has an RMR built-in offsite. So if you do this weapon, you don't even have to put the offsite on. Offset, it will automatically do it for you, and you'll uh, you'll save yourself a little bit of time. But on top of that, you can see I got my standard attachments. I got the I got the pack. I got a suppressor, which is critical when you're playing the the sniper role, um, mainly because. The biggest things that can compromise you engaging at range is the noise you make or the flash you create when you fire shots. So the suppressor kind of attacks both those issues. And then obviously your signature in general, but you can't really camouflage yourself besides a ghillie suit in this game. So we won't talk about that. So advantage to this weapon system, like I said, 7.62, you get the longer barrel, you're more accurate at range. Only downside, you're losing 10 rounds. So you got 20 round magazines, which last I checked, yeah. There's no uh, weird 30 round magazine that they made up. On top of that, you could, you could if you really had to do this CQB, but would not recommend it unless you're the last guy alive. Um, this will not in real life or in this game handle super well uh, down, down in uh, CQB fights. If you're playing at night and you're the DMR, make sure, make sure, make sure you put on this uh, AN PVS 22 UNS. Uh, this is a huge asset. It actually can see better at night uh, than the nods currently do in this game. Um, which in, in real life, I can't remember if the ones we use in real life are this one, but we have a lot of optics that go on our, our snot guys and uh, they're, they're pretty incredible is what they can see through smoke and all this other stuff. But make sure you put on that. Um, you'll be able to see at night. Uh, you'll be able to engage targets well out to 300 meters, no problem. And you'll be able to support your team. Um, I'll show you really quick what this looks like and feels like. So just uh, transitioning from high ready to low ready, uh, you might be able to see it, but you can definitely feel it when you're playing this. It's a little significantly slower than, so this is the, all the way backed out at a 5X, and then you can zoom all the way in to the 25. You can see obviously there's a lot of sway zoomed in that much, and then muscle fatigue with the sniper rifle is also a downside, uh, which does play in in this game. You got your offset rail if you need to transition for some reason the close sight, but as you can see with any scope, uh, this one particularly the PM2 is bigger, but you're you're cutting off so much of your sight picture. This is another reason why CQB is just, you should just be a sniper. If you're gonna be a sniper, don't be weird, be mid-range if you don't, but just be a sniper. So those are the builds I kind of recommend. Um, once you learn the system, I know when I first started playing, this was a little bit overwhelming, all this stuff. And if you guys wanna see a video about like building your kits out, this is the, my current kit loadout. Um, but if you wanna see a video like that, leave it in the comments and section down below. 
Um, I didn't touch, they have a couple other, I didn't touch the LMGs, the shotguns, or the SMGs, mainly because I don't use them. I'm not huge fans of them in the game. No one really seems to run much of anything in terms of those, unless it's like a Mimi shotgun or just spraying with LMG because there's minimal recoil currently. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a little bit. Um, if you're new to Ground Branch, make sure you check it out. Um, it's on Steam. It's available. There's been a couple sales on it. You might be able to pick it up for cheap, but it's an awesome game still in early access. Um, and you can check out my review and uh, I'll put it in the description and it's available on my channel. But I hope you guys learned something about Ground Branch, a little bit about weapon systems in general. And uh, I'll check you guys in the next video. Leonidas signing off. I've stayed here too long, but something brings me back to you. I swear we belong, I'm still hanging on, but something brings me back to you. Back to you, back to you.